beautiful people. So today I'm going to be talking about something slightly different to usual, but that's kind of my brand anyway. I'm going to be talking about pelvic organ prolapse, specifically my journey with prolapse. This is not for the faint hearted. I will say this once, okay? Please leave if you really do not, you know, cope with too much information, specifically with those areas. Just, you know, we won't mind. Just, just move on by, okay? For the rest of us. First of all, a little disclaimer in the fact that everybody has different symptoms and side effects as a result of prolapse and there are multiple different types of prolapse which I will go through as well. But these symptoms are going to be the same. It's not black or white and I think that's something that is under addressed in the medical fields. Anyway, so my journey with prolapse started, well I mean it may have started since I was born. I, When I was younger, I used to wet myself a lot when I laughed. Never really thought anything of it, never went to see the doctor about it. And I'm talking before I was in secondary school, um, in high school, so I never thought anything of it. However, this year I had seven surgeries, I had cervical cancer, I had operations on my womb, I had all sorts of scans and fiddling around and bits and bobs. A lot kind of went on in that area. Also, a few years ago, I had very severe sexual abuse. Every sexual abuse is severe, but in terms of the damage that was done was pretty intense and I didn't know if it was ever going to get back to normal. All of these things could factor into why this has happened to me because a lot of the common Causes of prolapse are things like childbirth, um, low estrogen levels, trauma, I suppose, physical trauma. It's straining when you poo is one as well, which doesn't apply to me because I had IBS for like 10 years. That's what may have caused mine and also the surgeries and things as well. I still don't know, the doctors still don't know, so who knows. As this year has gone on, my gynecologist has increasingly said to me, oh, have you had children? I'm like, no, nope. you know your, your cervix is very very low down and uh, it doesn't you know it doesn't look right we've got to watch out for prolapse and as time has gone on they have said oh you know it's, it's semi-prolapsed which is just terminology for a, a grade 2 prolapse so there's different gradings of prolapse there's grade 1 prolapse which is um, when it's just slightly loose grade 2 when the cervix is visibly lower grade 3 when it's I think almost at the entrance to the vagina and grade four when it's protru pro, pro tr I can't say my R's protruding out of the vagina, which is, must be horrific. So these I'm talking about uterine prolapse here, so um, the uterus prolapsing. You can also have bladder prolapse, and I think it's called rectal prolapse or colon prolapse, which are all you know. It's so so stressful for the people going through them. And if you are one of those, I'm so sorry that you're having to experience that. My symptoms, my side effects, how I kind of knew it was getting worse is I literally felt like I was trying to hold something in all the time. It felt like I was like almost like I had a tampon in but I haven't worn tampons in years because of all my problems. So it was like trying to squeeze something in like something was falling out and I still f I feel that now like something is something is there falling out. It is obviously the pressure of my lowered uterus on on the walls there that's that's making that feeling i experience pain actually however if you look up any website about it it never will go as far as to say pain but the word that we get ladies and gentlemen is discomfort Whew. yeah it's not discomfort it's definitely pain but thank you for minimalizing my symptoms once again in women's health classic one thing i've noticed as well is that I feel more PMS with prolapse than I did before, like increasingly over the last few months my PMS has got worse because I think the pressure is all a lot around here, I was all a lot like what is going on, I shouldn't fit into this space. <laughs> I do experience pain, especially actually at the minute, I know it's getting a lot worse at the moment. When I was away last week in Scotland, there's a video on my YouTube, do go have a look, subscribe, also have an Instagram at Rebecca Allen chat more rubbish there as well. Okay, sorry, that's done. I was kind of wild camping and I was worried that I didn't know when the next toilet was gonna be and it's all well and good weeing in the outdoors but pooing in outdoors is kind of daunting. I did do it but it's 
I prefer not to. So I guess I strained a little bit more than I would normally when I went for a poo and suddenly was like, oh, really um, like a quick sharp pain and then that was it. And since then I've kind of, I've really felt it. Not not the pain, not, you know, excruciating pain, but just I'm very aware that it's that it's got worse. It has slipped down. I, I'm just aware that it's happened. I know that my cervix is lower anyway. Um, I don't know how low it is at the minute though. And trying to do Kegels this week. So Kegels is where you squeeze your vagina, um, like the muscles and, and hold that as an exercise has been almost impossible to the point where I get frustrated and quite upset about it. Um, because it does, it worries you because especially with uterine prolapse, the next step is then can be, not for everybody, can be incontinence. And I'm very, very young. It doesn't matter what age you are, but it's it's quite a scary thought to think that I'm not going to be able to control when I go to the toilet. So it, it has given me a little bit of anxiety, especially the last few days, just feeling that happening. Something that is key is the fact that we talk about it, is the fact that, you know, we are open. I think that's something that I'm definitely an advocate for. Prolapse happens to a third of women in the US. That's insane. Absolutely insane. And you know, some people will never know it's happened at all. Some people will be very aware that it's happened, like me. It is challenging because I, I, I don't have, it's not normal. I shouldn't feel this kind of worry and like I'm constantly trying to hold something in like I constantly feel something there constantly like something just pushing that's what I feel all the time in regards to intimacy sex difference for me has been that I'm constantly worried about the pain constantly because I never know when it's going to happen I'm pretty sure the grade of my prolapse changes from time to time because, well, I mean, where your cervix is changes during your menstrual cycle anyway. Um, I believe it's lower when you ovulate. Um, but because of especially problems I've had in the past, and now with prolapse as well, it's constantly on my mind. And it's, you know, that's psychologically affecting me anyway. And then physically, it's, it's different every time. And I'm like, I don't know what to expect with my own body. And that's kind of terrifying and hard to... To deal with and it's not impossible it's just i think the problem is this that the effect psychologically and that i'm constantly have this fear um and that's you know massive when you just trying to be romantic and you're like oh, hang on let me just deal with how scared i am right now and i'm sure a lot of other people can relate to that and it's it's rubbish that 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 is that way so what i've been doing is doing a little bit of research into how to make it more manageable if it's reversible what can be done basically and there are surgical options which I am completely averse to because I just think do as much research as you can regarding surgery just from surgical experience I have had if you have a grade one or two prolapse you can reverse it which is incredible if you have a three prolapse there is still a chance you can reverse it and a four may require surgery but both threes and fours can be managed and I think that's key is that we can manage the symptoms so obviously there's Kegel exercises there is a way of doing it right which I probably need more research into we've been looking on Amazon at different products so there's obviously the LV product goes in your vagina and I think gives you exercises and stuff it's like 200 pounds which is a lot of money to spend on something that I shouldn't really have to buy. <laughs> but didn't go for that option. I also didn't really want electricity in there. I get a bit paranoid about things like that, but that's just a personal preference. Um, just I think because I've had cervical cancer and someone was like, you should keep your phone away. And I'm like, I don't keep it near my vagina anyway, but all right. <laughs> I don't actually now keep my phone in my pocket because I'm paranoid. For this, I'm not trying to sell anything. I've not even used this yet. Uh, it, Pear drops. This was thirty pounds and was one of the better reviewed ones. <gasps> I've li it's literally arrived this morning, which is incredible. I'm super excited about this. So it comes with these different pear drops, which have different weights on them. So from fifty grams to one hundred thirty grams. <laughs> Someone put a fantastic review on actually saying the first time they tried this, they couldn't keep one in, and I'm like, that's going to be me because I have no strength at the minute with my vaginal 
more muscles, nothing is there because obviously the prolapse has, has kind of freaked everything out. But she said she tried it lying down with her legs up and just at first and then gradually was able to hold them in. Um, I mean, they look fucking awesome. This <laughs> one on the Good Morning Show, it's a program in the UK. It's something similar to this and she tied, I kid you not, a can of baked beans to the bottom. And she'd obviously been practicing for a very, very long time. I think two years or something actually. They're all different colours as well. I literally love this. Oh, this one's the lightest one and even this feels kind of heavy. <laughs> I love this little wiggle. I think it's kind of funny. Yeah, so she li literally lifted a can of baked beans with her vagina. Which, you know, that would be the end goal. Be a vagina weightlifter. But for now, I just want to A, make it more manageable for me and also reduce the risk of things getting worse. I thought, you know, I desperately want kids, like I can't even explain, but it's not the right time in my life to have kids, according to everyone else. <laughs> but the thought, you know, childbirth would physically not be possible for me at the minute because half my vagina is, well not, half my uterus is in my vagina. It just wouldn't work, you know, and that's terrifying. So this comes with an ebook, which I believe is it gets emailed to you, um, which apparently is pretty good. If you want a review on this, everybody, just let me know in the comments. Obviously, I can't give you that much of a detailed review, but I can verbalise it. Yeah, or like an update. I might do more stuff. Oh my gosh, my ears look funny then. I might do more stuff on women's health because it's something that I'm really passionate about and also quite experienced in for all the wrong reasons. Do let me know if you want me to talk more about this and prolapse is not the end it's a naff situation and I know that there's so many people just walking around with normal vaginas that don't have to worry about if it's gonna fall out all the time okay I get that I have this jealous feeling as well you know I have the same thing with my womb people are like hmm, I don't want kids and I'm like yeah but you've got a perfect womb haven't you everybody's entitled to their own opinions you don't have to have kids. It's just, I'm just vocalising, vocalising my emotions here. Um, so yeah, no, if you'd like more information, please, please, please pop something in the comments. And I'm, I'll happily do more videos on this, on more updates on how it works with the weights and things like that. A tough situation to be in, but I really do think we can manage it. Good positive attitude, good positive mindset and active, you know, let's fix this, let's manage this, let's do what we can to make this easier for ourselves. That is my story of prolapse. Did I even go into enough detail about what happened to my prolapse situation? Probably not. Oh, and one thing I saw in another video is if you think you have prolapse and your doctor looks and they say, mm, not really, ask them to examine you standing up because a lot of prolapse visibility disappears when you're lying down which makes perfect sense it just flips back up but because a lot of you know your GPs will not have as much experience with women's health as a gynecologist for example they won't be able to you know won't recognize that as you know they may never they may, may not have seen a prolapse in I don't know months yeah ask to be examined standing up as well and, and see if that gets gets you to a um, better answer anyway Thanks for watching guys, please subscribe if you'd like more, follow me on Instagram at Rebecca Allen and subscribe, I've already said that, and yeah, bye bye!